Welcome to the Life Makeovers Podcast. My name is Cindy D. Whitmer, and I am the Midlife Makeover Coach, helping you turn your midlife into your best life one step at a time. Through powerful conversations, my own midlife roller coaster story, and over three decades of helping people transform their lives through counseling and coaching, I am on a mission to help you create your own definition of success and happiness. Thank you for being here. Hey, everybody, it's Cindy here. Thanks for joining me for the Life Makeovers podcast today. I hope you're doing really, really well. I'm always happy to uh, join you in, the, in this way and share some things that I know that work well in my life and want to support you in your journey. So it's uh, the new year has come and gone and we're into uh, it a bit now, uh, nearly a couple months in, right? And by now, many people have forgotten what their new year's resolutions were, what their goals were, um, or have tried and, and gotten frustrated and stopped trying or failed or given up or whatever at this point. Um, I, I see this every year. It happens all the time. It's human behavior. It's common. And recently I heard a new term called habit stacking, and it really caught my attention. And ironically, it just came in a little health newsletter that I received from Advent Health. And I believe the author's name is called Lisa Markley. So anyway, Lisa, if you're out there and happen to hear this, thank you for that term. I love it, habit stacking. And I think she she shares three ways to habit stack, which helps us more um, easily incorporate new behaviors in our lives. And I think it's just brilliant. And maybe you've all heard of this. Maybe you've already done this. I don't know, but I found out that I have actually done this without calling it this. And so I totally support what she's saying here and want to give you some, some new information around this or what was new information to me. So there's three methods of habit stacking that uh, Lisa Markley shares in this article. And one is called the chain method, the chain method. And this is linking one habit with another habit. So an old habit that you do without even thinking was something new that you're trying to incorporate into your life. Okay, so, so it totally makes sense, right? Because of like chain link that, uh, fences, you know, linking a habit with another habit. And so I remember an example of this in my life decades ago, when I, my dentist was encouraging me to floss and I had not incorporated flossing into my life yet. This was many, I don't even know how many decades ago this was, but I do remember thinking, how am I going to remember to do it? How am I going to remember to do it? How am I going to remember to do it? Well, obviously I brushed my teeth twice a day without even thinking at that point in my life. Cause I've been doing that forever since I was a kid. And so from that day on, I was like, okay, I will not brush until I floss. And so I flossed first and then I brush every morning. So in other words, I linked the new habit of flossing with the habit of brushing my teeth, the chain method of habit stacking. Okay, so start to think right now, what what is a habit you have that is really easy that you don't need to think about in your life? You do it so naturally. And what is one that you're wanting to incorporate that you haven't been able to yet? And how can you link them together in this way? Okay, so think about all those things you wanted to change this year in all areas of your life as I keep going. So the second method is the sequence method. Okay, the sequence method, which is a series of habits that you add in a new one in. So one after the other, after the other, after the other, a whole series. So it's like you're following a plan. 
or putting them in order helps you remember all of them. So it's more manageable. So a sequence method that has cre been created in my life, this was about, oh, I don't know, 15 years ago now, maybe 12 years ago, quite a long time ago. I heard of the concept from Jack Canfield, who is the founder of the Chicken Soup of the Soul series, book series, but he's also America's number one success coach. And I trained and certified with him uh, personally, which was a fantastic experience. And he taught those of us training with him about the concept of a power hour in to start your day off a power hour to really, to do this one hour of sequence of activities to set you up for a strong, energetic, productive, happy day. And um, so I started doing the power hour and it's really like the sequence method because what I chose for that power hour was number one, some inspirational or spiritual reading Okay, and I have several resources I turn to for that. And then writing in a gratitude journal after that. And then meditating after that. And then some kind of movement <clears throat> after that. All within one hour of time. And so I do a combination of those most mornings of my life. Most, especially during the week. Uh, I add the exercise on the weekends. I often just do the spiritual work, the gratitude journal and the meditation. But during the week, I'm also adding the movement. So I might, you know, read out of my Course in Miracles book and then write in my gratitude journal and then meditate for a little while and then go do jump on my trampoline for a while and lift some small weights on the big ball and then do some yoga. Like, or I have like a stretching routine, an energy stretching routine that I do. So I might on my days that I do softer movement, I might do just yoga and stretching. But anyway, regardless, I have this power hour, right? Where I do the spiritual reading, gratitude journal, meditation, and the extra the movement. And so that's like the sequence method. So you want to find some <clears throat> some routine you have in your life, and it doesn't need to be like mine at all. I'm just giving examples, but maybe you have a morning routine or an afternoon routine or an evening routine or something, a weekend routine where you already do some things very automatically and you want to put in, in that sequence of behaviors, a new behavior, okay? And so you're doing that. You can do that to make it a series of habits that go together nicely for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So, and the third method she talks about is the pairing method. And this is doing two things simultaneously. Okay. So a habit you love doing already and pairing it with something you want to make sure you start doing. So then you're more likely to do them. And she calls this a temptation bundle. So you're tempted to do the one thing that, that's new because you're adding in this, this spicy habit you already enjoy. Now, yeah. I did this a gazillion years ago, way back when, lived in Iowa. It must have been the 90s. And I had one of those Nordic track things you guys remember that where your your arms go back and forth and your legs go back and forth um and that kind of thing and uh i you know i just had trouble getting myself going with that thing i was trying to get in a routine of exercise way back when and i wasn't wasn't doing it successfully but one of the things i loved to do that i also wasn't doing it consistently was read and so I bought one of those, um, a little book stand thing that could hook onto the Nordic track. And so I, it became my reading time and my exercise time. And I loved to read so much and really my kids were small then and I just was not finding quiet time to read 
in life and was often, you know, thought I was too tired to exercise. But when I paired them together, the reading and the movement of the Nordic track exercise, I was eager to get on that thing. And that's, I believe, what Ms. Markley is referring to now is pairing two things together, something you love doing and do more naturally, and then add in the new habit that you want to start. So these days, I do let myself read, <clears throat> you know, more so. And so that's not such an issue anymore. But exercise, I, you know, I'm always looking for ways to, uh, get, you know, enjoy movement, enjoy movement. And now what it is for me is podcasts. I love, 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 not just my own podcasts, but a whole bunch of other ones. And so I put the earbuds in and start listening to a podcast that either, you know, whatever, I like a lot of different kinds. And then I start going, I go on the treadmill or I go for a walk outdoors on the trail around our house or whatever, but it gets me doing both things at once, which really, really is fun. <clears throat> so, so again, we're linking together to a couple of habits. So the chain method, right? When you do this, you're going to do this before or after or whatever. So they're linked together. Or the sequence method where you throw the, the new habit into a routine, a succession of behaviors you already do that feel really good and you wanna, wanna do. And then uh, the pairing method where you do two at the same very same time. Um, the podcast thing also helps me get this, dust the furniture more often. Because of all the domestic chores that there are in life, of all of them inside and outside of a home that I, you know, engage in like most people do, dusting is my least favorite until I get on a great podcast or listen to music that I love. And then dusting goes by, you know, like it's nothing, a couple, two, two and a half hours of dusting or whatever goes by much faster for me. And I'm more likely to do it more often because I'm letting myself be entertained or informed or educated or just delight in the experience of listening to an expert or listening to music that I love uh, with the habit of cleaning, of cleaning. So the goal is really of all of these methods and of habit stacking in general, the concept of habit stacking is to create a healthy, uh, a healthy system, a system for healthy behaviors that become automatic for you. So it doesn't, it's not such a struggle. So it's a way to create a new routine without completely disrupting your life, but instead integrating, integrating the new behaviors you wanna create with old behaviors you already do naturally and automatically. So that, my friend. So, uh, so please put some thought into this. If you are wanting to make changes or had grand ideas about making changes this year and they've kind of fallen by the wayside or you haven't quite figured out how to get into your flow and uh, think about all areas of your life. You know, I, I tend to talk about some main areas being like our relationships, our health, our finances, our professional life, our personal development and our environments also. So think about all of those areas in life or what other ones you can think of that are important to you that maybe I haven't identified here. And uh, ask yourself, gosh, what am I already doing that really feels in flow, that feels really good in those areas that I love to do or that I feel easily inspired to do? I don't need to drag myself into it. And then what can I, what do I want to incorporate? What do I think would really be an improvement in my life or really add something wonderful in these areas? And how can I find a spot for those in some of these ways 
Um, so it becomes just a natural part of my, my life. So I hope this is helpful. Another great way to get your life going, how you want it to go, is to hire a coach because coaches like myself and therapists like myself help people, you know, I help people remove the blocks that are getting them in their way, that are keeping them stuck from creating the lives they want. And I also help you identify what it is you actually want and all of that. And so um, I, uh, so I really encourage you to consider having a conversation with me. Let's just have a chat. Uh, no obligation, no, nothing to be nervous about. I'm just a regular gal like you, but I happen to teach people how to develop success habits in their life and create a sustainability plan. So they're actually, they know what they want and they have a plan put together to create it and then sustain it. So that's all a part of my midlife makeover method I created. This is a six step methodology that helps women in midlife turn your midlife crisis into the best years of your life. And the foundational piece of that is to learn how to properly and totally and unapologetically love yourself and build unwavering confidence so you can really go for what it is you want in your life in every area. So the start of that is for me to get to know you better and understand what's happening in your life. So if you go to timewithcindy.com, we can have a conversation and uh, I will do what I can to help you move that needle in your life toward having the, a life that feels really, really good to you in all areas. So get to habit stacking out there. Let me know how it's going. Just go to timewithcindy.com and we'll have a chat. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Life Makeovers podcast. Please like, subscribe, and share this podcast with those that you think would also benefit from what we're doing here. And I will talk to you again soon.